good evening to all so this video is regarding the infra bony defects and uh, i will tell you what are all the infra bony defects and how you can correlate it clinically as well as radiographically okay so uh, as we all know a pocket a pocket is something a pathological deepening of the gingival sulcus fine so normally the gingival sulcus is around 2 to 3 mm but in case of a pocket it will be definitely more than that Right. So this pathological deepening of gingival sulcus, we call it as pocket. This pocket can be supra bony that is present above the alveolar crest, or it can be infra bony. It is present below the alveolar crest. Okay. Now, if you look at the supra bony pockets, the supra bony pockets are nothing but your gingival pocket and your periodontal pocket. And the infra bony pockets, if you see. They are usually classified based on the number of osseous walls remaining. They are usually a vertical defects or angular defects. So it can be one wall, two wall, three wall, or combined. Right. So all these classification of the infra bony pockets, they are given by Goldman and Cohen in the year 1958. Right. So uh, this is the basic classification you have to know supra bony infra bony so the infra bony has all these and was given by goldman and kogan in the year 1958 okay before moving into the pathology you should know what is a normal level of your alveolar crest fine so if you look at this radiograph there is no bone loss so the arrow indicates the normal height of your alveolar crest it is usually 1.5 to 2 mm apical to the cemento enamel junction so it is very difficult to mark the cemento enamel junction in iopa but just assume that this is a normal radiograph it is usually 1.5 to 2 mm apical to the cemento enamel junction so when i give a radiograph like this it doesn't mean that there is a interdental bone loss it's a normal physiological iopa okay now moving on to the defects as we all know there are four walls right so we have the buccal or the labial, mesial, distal and the lingual or the palatal walls. Okay, three wall defect is very simple. It's a beautiful defect you can able to see here. So there is a defect in my distal aspect of a molar and radiographically, you know, there is not much evident because you know my buccal, buccal plate is present. So that might result in a hindrance of the actual defect. So uh, this can be correlated well clinically rather than radiographically because the presence of the buccal it will hide your mesial and the distal walls the three wall defect most commonly occurs in the mesial surfaces okay now if you look at the next image this one so this you can able to see my distal wall is involved as well as my facial wall is involved so if you look at the radiograph there is a radiolucency but if you look at closely there is not a complete radiolucency. There is some radio opacity which is intermingled there, right? Which indicates that my lingual wall or lingual plate is present. Fine. So next, moving on to this defect. This, if you see, I can see a through through defect, right? So my distal wall is not there, my facial wall, my lingual wall is not there. So and the radiograph beautifully explains it. There's a complete radiolucency. And this is how you, you have to correlate your clinical as well as your radiography. So first one, this is your three wall defect. This is your two wall defect and this is your one wall defect. Okay. Now coming to this case scenario. So there was a pocket of around uh, eight to nine mm. So uh, this is the radiograph. So uh, this is the radiograph and this is the clinical image on opening or elevating the flap. So if you look at the clinical image, I can see that my mesial wall is not there, my facial wall is not there, but I'm not sure whether my lingual wall is present or not, isn't it? But if you look at the radiograph, if you look at the radiograph, it's clearly evident that my lingual wall is not there, isn't it? So my, dist my mesial wall, my facial wall, as well as the lingual wall is involved. So this is classic of one wall defect. Okay, now this is another case scenario. So uh, uh, this is a radiograph. So if you look at this radiograph, I can see radiolucency, but 
there is still some amount of radio opacity at the back of my tooth at the back of this right so uh, if you can correlate it clinically on opening the flap you can able to see my uh, lingual plate is present right so my uh, distal wall is not there the facial wall is not there but the lingual wall is present isn't it so this is a classic of two wall defect so this is a classic of two wall defect and uh, this was the one which was asked in the exam so if you look at this my facial wall is involved my distal wall is involved but i don't know whether my lingual wall is involved or not fine so coming to the x-ray there is a radiolucency but there is no through and through radiolucency right? so there is some radio opacity which is intermingled with this radiolucency indicating that my lingual bone or lingual plate is present so this is a two wall defect and finally coming into the three wall defect it's very easy that's why i'm i just placed it in the last so you have three walls present most commonly occurs in the mesial surfaces and um, you can able to see here uh, the defect is present here so uh, that's that, that that there's nothing much about the three wall defect so what will be more confusing is your two wall defects or your uh, Three, uh, one wall defects so uh, these kind of image based questions you have to correlate with the clinical as well as the radiographic and um, if you look at the image based questions for the past uh, 2017 2018 2019 there are hardly five to six questions but if you look at the pre uh, last year need there are a lot of image based questions asked so uh, try to read as much as image based questions whenever you get a free time just go through the images in the standard textbooks so that you know you get familiarized with the images and it will be very easy once you uh, actually read that subject and uh, see always remember that um, whatever you read whatever you read now the knowledge which you gain during this period is going to stay with you forever so don't think that what uh, you know if it is not asked in the quest examination uh, you know i waste my time you are not wasting your time you, the knowledge which you gain is going to stay with you forever okay so uh, thank you for watching this video guys hope it was helpful and uh, please share with your friends thank you